you are still watching ways now jeans and tonics have been so uh, substantially a British drink for the longest of time now as a staple among the list of amazing cocktails out there now jeans and tonic have a high bitterness to it but it dies down with lime and sugar to make it palatable for most people now whether you order it at a bar or make it at home gin and tonic deserves their day <laughs> to be celebrated. If I'm all the say what so. a day. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm all the last say so. The funny thing is gin, neither gin nor tonic, are my poison of choice. My shekwe, my, my go-to alcohol is something called Cointreau. It's a triple sec. They tend to use it for mixing cocktails. That's what it's good for. But I like it straight and it was my father that introduced it to me. Yeah, our DJ. I, I remember tasting that drink is quite strong. It is. But it's sweet <laughs> it's as well. It's sweet, yeah. but you know, you know those kind of silent killers. You just be it's going a, high. You won't even know you're feeling high <laughs> <laughs> until you try to get up. Absolutely. So, Molana, thanks again for gin and tonic. Ideally, we should have shots, I believe. Peace. All right, so I want to quickly take Mary's story that okay. we found. Um, the source is actually from business reporter BBC. It says... Mm. Cement firm Lafarge pleads guilty to supporting um, the um, Islamic State, right? Mm. Islamic State has become one of the most formidable jihadist group in the world. And the French cement maker Lafarge has pleaded guilty in the U.S. to supporting the Islamic State and other terrorist group. The firm agreed to a 777.8 million dollar um, what's it called penalty now this um penalty for payment it made to keep a factory running in syria after the war broke out in 2011. Mm. um this is really scary i wish i can find someone that can really break down this to means. us you know and again you see when we talk about terrorism terrorism mm. is not cheap Mm -hmm. um the funders of terrorism you know we know that there would always there has to be um People it has to be a very very interests. massive funding that goes into that space yes so when we start to see things like this first we of all it tells me that they are working mm -hmm. and secondly we are we are hoping that more of these companies because it cannot just be, be limited exposed. to this particular company yes. uh, lafarge there are other companies that are tied and linked to terrorism and that is the only way we can fight one time we find trace the source and nip it there yeah. what they don't tell you is they will try to make it seem like they weren't aware they were actually aiding terrorism by pe being present there or reaping the benefits of a government that wasn't stable but a lot of people know that a lot of governments when it comes to oil when it comes to weapons there are a lot of governments that are invested that gain from destabilization of different governments. I mean, when you watch movies, not that I know what the FBI does per se, but when you watch movies about the FBI investigations, the CIA investigations, and you hear about the exchange of weapons for drugs while they're you know, funding wars over in certain regions because it's helping them keep some region to themselves, so they're the only ones exploring the oil there, you now realize that there's no war in this country, that it is only the citizens of the country that are involved. Hmm. Somebody is always a part of it. Absolutely. So you wonder how united this United Nations really are. Hmm. All right, look, your story, Lady. Yes, if the sound comes up, it's not my fault. I've turned it down several <laughs> times. But there really wasn't a catch. Um, uh, what's it called? A caption to it. It was a video that I had seen on social media where the members of the village or a community had been walking through floods, hip high floods, and trying to get from one area to the other, people in the Niger Delta. And they had ropes that other people had been able to tie around different banks of the river mm. to try and guide people on where to walk along and not get into any further danger. The problem, we're still going to talk about flood later on in the day, but what I find really interesting is that if you watch the video, I hope they're going to show a clip of it. If you watch the video, you find people smiling while walking through and kind of like laughing at themselves, saying, see our situation, this is what we have to do. Another girl was telling one of the men that was recording that, please, you'll have to send me the video so that I also have a copy of it, is the resilience of the Nigerian spirit mm. that really caught my eye. And in the comments, some people said, 
Well, it's when they're smiling about things like this that the government doesn't take it seriously. But really, me being resilient about suffering should not stop you from doing your job as a government. And I haven't actually seen any relief aids. Unlike when Katrina happened in America, hurricanes or, and tsunamis and everything, you would have heard that by now there will be camps established mm. Mm. To, and there will be evacuation schemes mm. to get people out. But these people are left to their own devices on how they're going to survive. In a country where we have people trying to win votes and not taking opportunities, even as indigents of this state, to put mm. some support together. I mean, if they could do it for COVID and individuals and private companies were donating $10 million, you could also call them to help you with this as well, is what I think. We'll talk more about it when we mm. treat the I was the going topic. to say to you that the federal government actually approved... Um, uh, a one sixteen point oh four billion mm. ecologic fund project across twelve states and the federal capital territory for soil erosion slash flood and mm -hmm. pollution control interventions. Mm -hmm. So there has been an approval of over sixteen billion. But you know that right. when they approve, the time it takes for the funds to come out. By the Federal out. Executive Council. Hmm. No, I'm just saying to you that, you know, you're talking about relief funds and all of that. Hmm. They have approved it, so it's not a, so much of the approval. It's, it's whether the it actually effectiveness and the execution no, of the funds. Yeah, it's whether it's actually channeled to what, what it was approved, they approved for. So for. That's, um, that's one hand, right? Hmm. So um, let me quickly take my story, then we'll go on a break, because I really want us to just delve into this situation with the Kogi state mm. right it's still on Kogi state right I just want to quickly read according to Boa group says Boa withdraw sorry according to punch mm -hmm. Boa re with withdraws interest in Kogi land now Boa group said it had withdrawn its interest in the 50,000 hectares of land in Kogi state over the failure of the land to meet its intended purpose, uh, purposes okay. and this comes after the state assembly threatened to revoke the uh, certificate of occupancy mm -hmm. on the land allocated to the company for investment purposes in 2012 for non-payment of compensation now a statement by the company said that since the state um, invited boa to invest in 2012 there had been no visible efforts they hear mm. by the state and successive government to address the issues of access to the land mm. that would enable boa utilize the land for its intended purpose. purpose so saying that infrastructure i know how much we had to cough out you understand to fix the roads leading to our farmlands. Mm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. We bought tractors, we bought escalators, we mm -hmm. bought grade, we brought in graders, we had to rent graders and all of that. Just to fix the road that takes us from the express into to our access, farmlands. So to access to our farmlands. So now happen. I can imagine how much you see these fifty thousand hectares, I can imagine how much infrastructure that probably the government must have promised Gubar Group. You know, in the bit, okay, you know, mm -hmm. come to us, would make this have available. Mm -hmm. You've not made this available and you're trying to threaten the, the company. It doesn't make any sense. You can't. So we've said that the role of government, right? Provide the infrastructure, provide every other thing. Basic and basic, basic things, then we'll be fine, mm -hmm. right? They haven't done their part and they are now expecting, and, you know, a Boa Group to pay money. Pay money for what? To fix the road. And then you know about how many times that people as individuals have tried to fix roads and help their communities. And government will say it's a federal government land. Leave the it. road, you can't touch it. Well, I was even going to say to them, let Kogi take a cue from what is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the other day I took a story that MTN is trying to fix some roads, right? So let Kogi State take a cue. Call Boa. I am sure if you tell them that this infrastructure that you want us to put in place, we have the right if you do it, we would give you tax holidays. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how you you actually you invite with the private real people sector. to come into to to, to to I mean to 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 invest in your state. I'm sure they've had that, those conversations before. I can't believe that there will be people sitting there that it has never occurred to. The problem is that when they speak to one person, they actually let them lose faith in the project when everybody wants their palms greased. Greased. All right, on that note, let's go on a break. I want to discuss flooding in Kogi State. Stay with us. We'll be right back.